Hello and welcome on International Women's Day. I am so excited that you are here. Um, feel free to jump in on comments, anything that feels good, say hi, let me know you're here, let me know if Lizzo pumped you up like it does me. So what I'm going to do for this uh, for this is to just, you know, I'm going to dive in. I have something that I want to share. So I'm going to kind of do a little bit more of a speech, so to speak. And then I'm going to take, you know, if you have any questions, if there's something that you'd like to add, if there's anything that you would love to say, we'll take some time for that at the end. So I am just going to dive in to this because one of the things that I really wanted to address tonight as well kind of before I really start is, you know, International Women's Day has had is, is a really powerful day in acknowledging women and women's achievements and women's accomplishments around the world. But one of the things that we also need to remember is that International Women's Day has also taken more of women's time. Women are planning more of the events and, you know, we, we end up spending a lot of time kind of dedicated to this day as well. So it's something for us to remember. And one of the reasons that I really wanted to make this short, but hopefully powerful for you tonight in that you have, you know, an inspiration and a motivation to, to walk away with some seeds planted, to think about yourself, your future, your own life um, as we do that, but also not to take too much of your time, because I know as women, you know, we have so many things on our plate already. So this year's theme is called breaking the bias. And what does it mean to break the bias? What biases are we facing in 2022? It can be very easy to believe that women have all the rights now conversation and even easy to forget how much we need to keep marching because we have absolutely come so far, but we still have far to go. Not in our rights, even as much on paper, but really in the opportunities that we have available. The Dalai Lama said the Western woman will save the world. And I know this to be true because we have more rights than any other woman in the world. It is up to us to march, to speak, to show up and to keep pushing the limits. We have opportunities that our grandmothers fought for. We stand on the shoulders of women who fought before us. We stand on the shoulders of our grandmothers and great grandmothers. We stand on the shoulders of those women who went out and were willing to be beaten and jailed for wanting the right to vote, for getting rape inside of marriage illegal, for getting rights so that we could own our own bank accounts and get financial independence and freedom. That was only you know, in the 60s, 70s you know, for reference. The list of our achievements is endless, but what's harder to see is that the wage gap exists because women don't ask for the top of the pay scale. That's why we're still paid less because we don't ask for it because of our conditioning to not be too much or that where we live is usually because it's easier and more aligned for the man, either his job or his desires What's harder to see is the women who miss work consistently because of sick children or having to homeschool their children during a global pandemic or choosing between work and staying home because it's not financially feasible. This cost women, right? There are costs to women that we still see today. Even harder to see is women fighting against the patriarchy in their own family, being told what they can do, what they can't do, what's right, what's wrong fighting to find a place for the world within herself, fighting the bias that comes with being a woman, the conditioning that labels, marginalizes, and regales women to the back corners. Women have been trained and conditioned to be pleasing, polite, nice, accommodating, conceding, not challenging or difficult, not to be too much demanding, reckless, or too passionate. She's been called a whore, when she's passionate and approved when she is proper. She's a tease when she thwarts advances and she's playing hard to get when she doesn't want it. She's defined in her role as a mother, a wife, a daughter, a woman. She's defined and judged and scrutinized to the point where she judges, defines and scrutinizes herself. She becomes her own prisoner in a world where she locks herself away, confines the most powerful parts of herself to fit into a world that was never made for her to fit into. If I could break a bias, it will be what defines us as a woman. 
She is supposed to be polite, friendly, pleasing, not too much, not too little, just right. But she never knows who's just right she needs to be because there never seems to be any pleasing anyone anyway. We are defined by our pierced ears to make us girly and our closed legs to make us small. We are defined by how pliant we can be. Even today, the divine feminine movement has been overtaken by the pliant woman movement. To be defined, to be divine and to be feminine, we must be soft, accommodating, slow, understanding, forgiving, and pleasing. We are defined by how good we can be, how submissive we are. I want to break the bias that all women come in one package and that to be a woman or feminine, we must fit into one set of criteria. That we choose certain jobs, speak in certain ways, drink and eat certain things, shrink and primp ourselves into the most basic version of ourselves so as not to upset the apple cart. What makes a woman then? It is not simply a gender, for women cannot be encompassed only in biology or reduced to the sum of our total parts. But we are not, are we not feminine when we are feisty or when we won't back down? Energy matters, but do we all need to embody only one energy in order to be defined as a woman? This doesn't flow and doesn't allow woman to encompass all parts of herself. It marginalizes us to certain roles and traits and we become pleasers instead of powerful. We are labeled as intimidating because they can't handle us. We are told not to argue or be difficult because it will make us more likable and less threatening, to be softer, to make it easier, to walk on us. The truth is the world has benefited from marginalizing women into certain feelings, behaviors, traits, and roles. Women in line are not a threat. Women who don't obey, don't listen, who have minds of their own, who embody the wholeness of who she is, soft and hard, powerful and nurturing, but regaling a woman to a subset of who she should be has left many confident, powerful women struggling between embracing being a woman and embracing being who she is, as if they are two different things, in constant conflict with who she is really and who she had to become. The truth is women have led riots and rages while bearing children. Women have won wars, have been warriors, and still feminine. When we regale a woman to one thing, we deny her her full power. When we take women today and tell her that she has to be a certain thing to be a woman, we leave her at once confused of who she is, at war within herself as if what she feels as her own truth makes her less valuable to the world. It leaves her not sure of which way to go, with her heart or with her conditioning. Too often women are forced to choose between what they want and what their mind has been conditioned to believe. Women are led to believe that real girls can't, don't, won't, shouldn't. If I could break a bias, it would be learned powerlessness and learned helplessness that women are conditioned to believe will make them wanted, desired, and more palatable. And perhaps it will. But it will also teach her to walk away from herself constantly until one day she's walked so far away that she can't find her way anymore. That serves the world for women to be confused between her head and her heart. A woman who is in her power is not controllable. In breaking that bias, I would remind women that being a woman is about your head and heart being aligned. Your heart knows the way. Your head will help you find the best path. When you pit yourself against yourself, you will just walk in circles endlessly. When you choose to deconstruct the biases and the conditions in which you've believed, you will find your power. And for every woman, that power is different. Some are born warriors, mothers, nurturers, mystics, witches, doctors, coders, painters, writers. The list is endless. We are not one thing. There is not one formula for womanhood, as we have been falsely led to believe. As Lizzo says, if you feel like a girl, act like a girl, cry like a girl, then do your thing and run the whole damn world. These old ways won't heal this world. The old beliefs that keep women powerless won't unlock new potential and won't elevate humanity into a more aligned future. 
It won't heal relationships. It won't elevate men. It won't end wars or inequality. It won't end colonization and the patriarchy. It will reinforce it. When we deconstruct the bias of femininity, of what makes us a good woman, what gives us access to the term woman, what gives us the rights to be a woman, when there is no standard and no formula. But the pain of women is because we have been given a formula and we've all been forced to fit neat and tidy into the boxes laid out for us. But a woman is too much to be confined into the boxes that narrow us and hold us back. Eventually the boxes break open and they say we unraveled. We lost it. Well, of course we did. No one can half live or walk a tightrope forever until the frayed ends of her soul come undone, smashing everything in its sight to be free. These old ways that women have been told won't help us tomorrow. What will help us tomorrow is when we all embrace our uniqueness, reminded that womanhood has billions of faces. What will open the future is a realization that it's woman in her truest power, which is who she is, what her heart wants, a full reclamation of her own truth. That's what will open the doors to tomorrow. That's what will help us build a world of equity, of equality, of empowerment. Only when we break the bias of what a woman should be can we redefine what a woman is. When we redefine what a woman is, we can build a world in which she actually belongs, a world in which she has a say, no longer trying to fight for space or to be seen or witnessed or honored in a world that was never created for her to thrive in. That's what the world needs. Women in their power, in her uniqueness, in her wholeness, instead of broken down, pieced together to be the most pliable and pleasing version. No, the world needs you in your grandest, boldest, most powerful version of you. That's what will open the door to the future. If I could break a bias, that's the bias I would break. If you have any questions, now I will open up the chat. If you have any comments, anything that was stirred in you, anything that you, um, anything that you would like to add, to ask, to say, to comment, I'm going to open up the chat. I feel like I'm, there might be audio on for someone else, but I can't, normally I can turn it off, but it's not allowing me tonight. So uh, if you guys can hear a little echo, that sounds like somebody, or you guys might, somebody else might be there. Um, so powerful. <laughs> Thank you, Don. I feel like everybody's like, you know, it just poured out of me today. I had a little bit of a different plan. And I've learned one thing in my life is that when my heart tells me to say something else that I have learned that when I don't listen to my own heart, that I go down the wrong path. So I shared a blog post last night about, you know, what happens when we follow fear instead of faith. And when we're following fear, we're following this condition thing that tells us that we have to live and be and act a certain way. It also, when we start to follow this and listen to this, it leads us to the right thing. And so I trusted that what was pouring out of me was not a workshop, so to speak, that it was an empowerment piece for you to think about the ways in which we are living, the ways in which we are conditioned, the ways that you hold yourself back, the ways that the patriarchy lives within you. The ways that you don't go after what it is that you want, whether it's where you live, the relationships that you're in, uh, whether it's the career, the job or money or any of these things that truly disempower us in many ways, because that is what serves the world. It serves the world for women to not be in her power. During the pandemic, it took women out of the workforce consistently. What was missing was women. That's what went missing from the workforce because women consistently had to choose between their careers in a way that, you know, men and, and other people don't have to choose. So we are still facing an awful lot of bias. And as white women, or at least white appearing women, oftentimes those biases are a little bit less for many white appearing women. But if you are 
you know, in um, a minority, an ethnic minority, or, you know, in, in women of color, they are recently talking about, and many of us have had to learn to listen to this and have a deeply uncomfortable conversation about how much of the women's rights movement have done nothing for women of color or indigenous women. So when we look around at this, you know, how many of our sisters are we pulling up with us? How much are we breaking the biases? How much are we looking around and believing some of these deeply embedded patriarchal conversations that are still happening saying, oh, women have all the rights or as I read today in a blog post that, you know, there's a new belief that the most oppressed group in, in the world is now the white man. Like, we haven't gone that far in the other direction. You know, this is not about hating men. Because as I said, it, what we will do will elevate everyone. And that's the power of women really getting to sit at the table. So that is what this is about, is about what tables are you sitting at? Who are you surrounding yourself with? How, what would you do if you were truly in your power? If you were in your heart, what decisions, what choices would you make? Where would you live? Where would you work? What career would you have? How would you show up in your life if you were not conditioned to show up in a certain way? If you were not believing that it had to be a certain thing, what would that look like for you? What would that feel like for you? That's what I would love to know. What are you, where do you find yourself you know, engaging in where, where were you raised in the concept that girls can't, shouldn't, don't, or won't? And where do you need to unravel the patriarchy that lives within you without regard to what, you know, many people in that external world or your external environment will actually believe, you know, or say about you in this pushback against what's really happening is women saying, I'm not defined by a set of criteria that someone decided that I have to be in order to be feminine, that in order to be a woman, that I have to contend with making these choices because we don't. The truth is, is that, you know, women for centuries have embodied the power of everything that lives within us and the ability to flow between all those parts is what makes that chaos the best thing about us, the ability to flow and move and the ability to reach for what it is that we want to be truly in our power. So I will leave it open if there's any questions. And if there's not, you know, we will, I won't drag you on. As I said, my goal tonight was to just say my, say what, I, say what came to me to be shared. And if there's no questions or comments, or if you would like to message me privately, feel free to do that. Um, but I am really excited that you're here. We had a lot of people sign up and um, I, uh, we only have a few people here on the live, but I was reading just before I jumped on the call because I was praying that my power and my internet would not go out tonight. Um, but I was reading that an enormous amount of people have lost their power and their internet tonight. So you know, well, hopefully that they'll get to watch the recording of this and, and walk away a little bit empowered. So if there's no questions, if there's no comments, then I want to thank you guys for being here. I want to, you know, celebrate you on International Women's Day for carving out a little bit of time for yourself to hear a message to, you know, I hope that this has been inspiring and profound in some way that there's a little bit of something that you can take out of this, that maybe you'll sleep on this journal about some of this, um, ask yourself some of these questions and start watching your life through the lens of asking yourself, why do I believe this? Why do I do this? Why won't I go after what I want? Am I living through my head or my heart? Are my heart and my head in alignment? What's living in conflict within me? And how can I erase that and start to redefine myself based on my own terms? And that is what I wanted tonight to truly be about on International Women's Day, because what we really need moving forward is not more of the same. We need women who are willing to break out, who are willing to say, I want something different. I want something more for women who are willing to end the conflict inside of ourselves so that we don't create a conflict outside of ourselves. We don't need more of that. What we need is 
is more women who are, you know, not caring, caring less about the, you know, the external conflict and more about the internal conflict, who are tired of silencing ourselves so that, you know, we're making other people comfortable or walking on eggshells to keep the status quo. We don't want to upset the apple cart. I say flip that apple cart and stomp on those eggshells because when you silence yourself to keep the peace, you start a war inside of yourself. And that is where the disempowerment really begins. That is where we begin to surveil ourselves, where we judge ourselves, criticize ourselves, and hold ourselves to some invisible set of standards that we think is going to be more pleasing or that's going to help us fit in or sit at the right tables. And it never does. Changing yourself and becoming someone that you are not will always land you at the wrong tables. But if you sit within yourself and you end the conflict within yourself, then you might sit at a table by yourself, but you will be strong enough to sit at that table alone while you wait for the right people to show up. You will be confident to walk enough to walk around and look at all the other tables and say, is there anyone at this table that might be my person? Where are my people? You would rather be alone because you know what you bring to the table when you are in alignment with yourself and within your own power than you would to sit at a table eating the wrong food, having the wrong conversation, having the wrong sex with the wrong people because it's comfortable because it's familiar. There's no excitement, no power, no passion in that. And what women really bring to this world and what is missing from this world is the vitality, the aliveness, the chaos, the, the controlled, empowered chaos, the, you know, this intensity that when we are in our power that we bring to the world and create a vibrancy that attracts like a moth to a flame. People can't, you know, they can't step away from it. They see it and it's, it's just people want more of it because the world is lacking true authentic power. And this is what's going to change the world. This is what's going to end wars and create equality. This is what's going to help elevate all of humanity. This becomes not about gender, but about rising up and then asking everyone else to rise up around us and being willing that when those people don't, or when you find yourself in the wrong place, in the wrong story, in the wrong song, that you are brave enough to find out what's inside of here so that you can start loving the sound of your footsteps, walking away from absolutely everything that doesn't keep you in your power. Because anything that requires you to trade your power for peace is not the right place. And it is never going to lead you to a destination of your own greatness. It will lead you to a destination of destruction. And I know that because I've been there. I've done it. And I know what it takes to end up crawling out of a ditch. And instead, when we start to learn through wisdom, because we're listening to this, instead of the conditioning that's outside of us, when we learn to go inside and grab on to who we really are, and we step into our greatest power and our greatest possibility and our greatest potential, that is when we truly have the power to not just change ourselves, but then ultimately change everything and everyone around us for the better. That is what makes the difference. That is what will actually create massive change in this world. Kept the peace I've learned is code for accept bullshit behavior quietly sure is because keeping the peace is only about making other people comfortable and what ends up happening when you make other people comfortable and you swallow your own truth and your own power and your own intuition and your own knowing you start a war inside of you and I have learned the hard way that I would rather a war outside than inside because if it comes at a cost of myself or my soul it is no longer worth the price that I have to pay for it. With that, I love you. Thank you guys for being here.